So I think in general for precarious status youth, there's a lot of, I think in general for youth, there's a lot of barriers they face navigating different Canadian systems. Um, and I think those barriers become more complicated or more difficult for youth with additional um, kind, kind of coming to terms with their own identity identities, whether it's like sexual identities or gender and gender identities. But, okay. <laughs> so a really good example that I can think of is um, the shelter system, for example. So for any youth accessing shelter, it can be really stressful and there's a lot of anxiety around that. For a youth without status, it becomes more stressful because they're asked for ID and they're not sure if they should disclose their status. And then it even becomes more stressful for members of the LGBTQ plus communities. Um, for example, if someone identifies as a member of the trans community or if someone identifies as um, gay or lesbian, it might be more difficult in terms of accessing a safe space within a shelter system. So being without status and navigating different sexual and gender identities um, can really aggravate anxiety and, and have a lot of negative impacts on people. And there are a lot of supports out there, which is the good thing. So there are a lot of um, LGBTQ plus community centers and organizations like the 519, Black Cap, um, the Sherburn Health Center that is supporting our youth program, which are open to people with varying statuses. And so accessing those services would really be helpful for people coming to terms with different identities. Is there anything that you would change? Change what? Why are you doing the <laughs> What change would you make if you were given the opportunity to make change? Um, I think there's a general lack of awareness of status and I think there's a general lack of awareness of how status intersects with other aspects of our identity right so I think there's a lot of organizations that are really aware of what it means to be non-status and I think there's a lot of organizations that are aware of what it means to be trans but where these two things come together I don't I think there's a gap there I don't think there's a lot of organizations that really have a full understanding of what it means to be living in Toronto as a trans person without proper immigration status. And so if I could see a change out there, I think more awareness needs to be raised around these issues and more um, services need to be kind of tailored to on both ends. So I think more settlement services need a positive space for members of LGBTQ plus communities and more um, LGBTQ serving organizations or kind of focused organizations need to be more aware of um, issues non-status or precarious status or victims and survivors of human trafficking or all of those other things, um, how they might impact someone's experiences in Canada. Um, the coolest thing about this website for me is that this website is youth-led and youth-decided and that the youth came together and decided that this is a gap, that there's a lot of youth out there that might have the luxury of an organization like FCJ where they can come and get support and they can be themselves and they can talk about status, they can talk about sexual identity and they can talk about um, what it means to be a refugee and what it means to be racialized and what it means to be illegalized and all these things in this space. But there's so many other youth out there that might not have the luxury of accessing a service and might be afraid to go to a service and disclose that they don't have status and what that means and how that impacts them. So a really cool thing about this website is that the youth have come together and they've decided that this is a tool that can be used by other youth in similar situations and sharing their stories and having a space to access resources and having a space to fill in a gap that's out there. And we, we do know that there's thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of youth in Toronto with some form of precarious immigration status and fearing deportation, fearing detention, fearing having to go home before their time and fearing all of these things and knowing how crucial it is to have supports and knowing how crucial it is to connect with something that feels like a family. And that's what a lot of youth describe here is that this space for them feels like home and feels like a family and feels like something that they've lacked.